and Jimmy was pissed off. What did he? Jimmy was pissed <laughs> off. It's like, what are you doing, man? And then uh, Raheem Mostert. Yeah. He dropped a pass that could, you know, I'm just like, what, what are, you, are you guys, ner- why are you guys nervous? What are you doing? You guys made the team already. And now you, you're dropping the ball. It's like, what's, what's going on? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, gotta put you ball, know, what, honestly, though, yeah. yeah, but honestly, uh, other than that, had they caught the ball and, and got in that end zone, it'd have been lovely. Are you listening? Rondo Sports here, representing the Niner Empire Organization worldwide, where 49ers football just never ends. In fact, we're about to come around to the loop where we get back into action. Bam, thank you for allowing me to come to talk 49ers football. This is like something I have to do each and every week. I need this. (laughs) It's a good time. You know you enjoy this. Bam, I don't even know where to start. All right, today I was sitting there going like a million thoughts going through my mind at the same time. I was like, oh my God, we got so many things going on right now. All right, let's, 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 we got a game coming up, right? So let me go ahead and jump right on to that. Chargers. This is the game. It's like, you know, Survivor Series of the WWE. This is Survivor game for guys who are obviously not going to be able to make the team because all the starters are going to be standing on the sidelines watching the game and looking cool because the fact is we're not playing. Obviously, we are the stars of this show. Look. <laughs> Sorry. They'll be on the sidelines. The guys who are trying to make the team are going to be out there working hard, trying to do just that. Now, here is the rich a wrinkle. I'm watching Kyle Shanahan as I normally do each and every day to see what he's saying now. Kyle says, normally when we come into this game at the end of the year, it's the final game of the year, normally we made up our mind pretty much about the players we're going to keep, who we're going to stay, who's going to be at the program, and it's pretty much a done deal. We may take a look at some, a couple of players or something like that, but right now, Kyle says, I can't put all the players on the practice squad that I want to put on the practice squad. If I could keep a lot more than we're allowed, which is only 10, I would. What does that tell you, fam? It tells you exactly what we've been feeling the whole entire preseason. Each and every division is stacked with all kinds of talent, and a lot of them are close. The level of, of athleticism, the everything about them, it's really close. Who are you going to get rid of? So Kyle's going to be looking at guys uh, for various reasons. I don't know what his criterion is for judging these guys, but he will be looking for them in this last game of the preseason. And, man, I, that's, that's going to make it a good game. That is really going to be a good game just for that reason. The most, I mean, there is one room that is already decided there will be no, no, actually they'll not have to think about anything more. You already know that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to start. But, Did you know, you figured CJ was going to have to compete with Mullins at least for as much as that's worth. He's going to have to at least compete. No, no. CJ has been appointed by Cal in advance. He is the number two dude. Mullins did a good job, though, didn't he? Listen, I'm not jumping in either camp. I'm just saying. Mullins deserves a little more credit than just CJ said. Thank you, Nick. You did a great job. If they put Nick Mullins on the practice squad, he's gone. He did just that well. Now, my, granted, he did do that against the threes and the fours, and that is looked upon as not being anything special. Uh, last year, I think Mullins came in the final game of the season, and he was the last guy to come on the field. Pretty much is what's going to happen this time. Uh, I do believe with Jack Hennigan, who we've not even seen all season long, not heard a word about him in camp or anything else. So Jack could be in, because I've noticed on the roster, his name is still there. I guess he's coming in. (laughs) The last guy standing. But CJ is a guy, the quarterback room has been just decided it is a done deal. It's Jimmy G, CJ's his backup, Nick Mullins to the practice squad, or whatever they plan on doing. There you go. Now, the most bizarre room in camp, all of a sudden, is now the running back room. What did you do, Kyle? Now, I understand the depth. They got Brady out. They got McKinnon out. You know, they got too many guys out, and they went out and got some more people. Albert Morris comes in, and against 
You were watching that game? Were you shocked? Were you surprised? I was a little, I knew he was good at this. He's been off for a long time, but I knew Kyle and Bobby Turner. They're the ones who trained this guy to make him a famous guy back in 2012. And I'm sitting there watching that. And like you, I was, whoa! Whoa, he did it twice in a row! You little stupid flag, right? So I was like, wow, this dude, man. Now, what was the next thing that went through your mind, right? Yeah, I know, right? What are we gonna do now? Jerry McKinnon's gonna start. Who's gonna be his other guy? I've already made up my mind. I love Matt Breda. I do, I do, I do. But as far as I'm concerned right now, it's an M and M attack. It's Morris and McKinnon as far as I'm concerned. Kyle's already said he's going with four guys, right? So I would I would assume McKinnon's not going anywhere. They're paying him too much. Morris, and McKinnon's a good ball player anyway. I'm not saying that. He's, he deserves to be there. Morris deserves to be there too. That's my number two guy. Now, they just brought in the sensation named Jaquan Gardner. Did you see? I, fam, I'm not going to go down through the list of his accolades. If I start reading right now, I mean, I'm reading down the page, right? I'm scrolling down, and it just goes on and on. This guy's been Mr. Everything. He's from the GNAC Conference, Division II school. But still, you know what really jumped off the page at me when I was reading about everything that he's won and accomplished and how much of a star he is? Four, 446 yards of total yardage in one game. How busy do you need to be? Now, the score was pretty high, <laughs> but still. And maybe they weren't playing that much defense. Or maybe he's just that invincible. 446 total yards in one game. That's a record. So I'm saying they're bringing him to San Francisco. He's 5'6". He runs a 4'5'7". I'm watching the tape, though, and I'm watching him go down the field. This dude is not looking like no 4'5'7". Although he's small and he's quick. You know how small guys can be quick like that? The, the, the fast twitch muscles. You go to reach for him, it's just gone. So I am thoroughly impressed. <laughs> With Jay Quan. Does he make the team? Will he learn enough to play in this game Thursday night? I don't know, but I do want to see him. Now, here's another thing. Peter Panassi brought this up, and he, 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 boy, he hit a home run with me right quick. If the 49ers, they seem to be reaching for this kid at the, at the last minute as if it were an emergency. The depth in the, uh, the running back core is pretty slim. They got Jeremy Nichols, they got Jeff Wilson, and who else? Joe Williams. Is, they got Mostert. Well, there's not a lot of guys available, so they had to bring him in. But why did you sign him for three years? There's a writing on the wall there. You don't sign a guy for three years uh, if you just want to come in for emergency relief. So I got a feeling the 49ers think they're going to keep him. What does that do to the running back room now? If Kyle says he's going to keep four guys, who are they? Let me help you with that. Jarek McKinnon. Alfred Morris. <laughs> the kid from Humboldt State. And Mostert, fam, I'm calling this right now. I got a feeling Matt Brady's the guy out that we would have assumed earlier that might be. I'm, I'm not saying I guarantee. I'm not saying promising you that, but I'm saying it looks to me if you're gonna sign a guy for three years right now, heck, Matt Brady doesn't have that many years left on his contract. And the McKinnon and and Alfred Morris is not going anywhere. There it is. I said Moster because the fact is Moster is like a Pro Bowl special teams guy. And no matter what we think about him, I think he stays. Wow. Fam, don't get attached to nobody. Don't do it, man. We're going to be, there's going to be a lot of broken hearts come September 1st. There's going to be some guys that are let go that we say, oh. You're going to be done this. Oh. Oh, no, 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 not him. No, not him. We'll be doing that the whole day. Yeah, we. Man, that's it, fam. I, that's my four. That's the running back room right there. Uh, we got to see more of this kid, Jaquan, but Jaquan is... Pfft, that's a bad dude. How that translates into the NFL, I don't know. Hopefully, we'll see that. And Kyle's got to give him a little burn. I think we will see it. You know, he has got the same offensive line that everybody else has had that's been doing well. But, man. Oh, man. Fam, oh, one more thing before we go to the camp. Richard Sherman. Did you check out the little documentary they got done on him? Man, what a guy. Hey, you know what? I already had a level of affection for Richard Sherman. It's been expanded. You know, Sherman is a very compassionate individual. He gave his heart and soul for the Seahawks. And they turned it right around. And as Sherman said, they called him and basically fired me. He was injured. He came off the field. And why? Because of that Achilles that the Seahawks were fully aware of. 
And I'll, let me, if you didn't see the story, here's what happened. Rich tells it like this. He said apparently he felt something in his foot. And then around that area around where the Achilles is. He goes into the doctor, has it checked out. They have it examined and the doctor says, here's your diagnosis. He says, you got some micro tears in your Achilles. Here's the story. If you continue to play on that, it could snap on you at any time. You could make it to the end of the season. It's a risk. You might make it, you might not. But that's, I mean, that's the truth right there. So Sherm says, I'm a competitor. I'll play until it snaps. You know, how many people do you know that would have done that? That's a Ronnie Lott level sacrifice. Lott takes off the finger because he wants to continue to play. Sherm says, I'll run the risk. It snaps, it snaps. But in the meantime, I'm gonna play football. Sherm. You, 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 you got my respect, bro. You had it anyway, but you just took it to the next level. That's crazy. And the Seahawks turned right around, knowing all of that, and they released him. Just like that. He would have been ready to play Seahawks football right now. Because he would have worked just as hard for them as he's working for us. You know what I really enjoyed? Marquise Goodman. You'll check it out. You'll probably see it in the same articles. Marquise Goodman comes out and says, man, I can't wait till the season starts so Richard Sherman can show the haters what's up. We got a brotherhood going, fam. That locker room is tight. And Marquise Goodman's going to make sure Sherm's ready because I know they're training every day. Sherm's got to have to, he's going to have to be ready because here's the thing. I also read where this new offensive coordinator, he likes to run that kind of football that Marquise Goodman smoked Sherman on early in the season. And every DC in the league, every OC in the league saw what happened when Marquise took Sherman to the bridge. Took him to the bridge! I mean, now everybody thinks they can get to run the go route and beat Sherm up. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, here's the thing about that. If even that should happen, we have reinforcements back there. You run a dude down there to go route, let Adrian Colbert see that action taking place. Adrian Colbert's got every bit of speed of any, or any running back, any wide receiver in the league for that matter. So if Richard's coming down the field jamming with some wide receiver, unless that quarterback gets rid of that ball in a hurry, Adrian Colbert to the rescue. Adrian can keep up with any wide receiver in the league. So I am not concerned about that. Sherman looks like Sherman already anyway. That little deal we saw with Andrew Luck and Jacoby Brisket, they wouldn't even test him. They tested him one time. That was the end of that. You see, that's why I'm very confident, as is Marquise Goodman and everybody else. Richard Sherman is about to show people in the NFL he is not done. <laughs> let's go get him, Niners. Let us go get him. In fact, let's go also to the, let's go to the camp right now and get some perspective for you about your San Francisco 49ers. Not a fam, that familiar handsome guy, man, I'm telling you, man, you know who that is, that's C. McCarver Jr. He's also got, he's got programming going on about the 49ers constantly. We'll be checking him out, C. McCarver Jr. What's up, Rombo? Shoot, man. What's you, going on, man? All kind of good things. But Carver, man, I'm looking at my, my quarterback. It's been good since last year. I was wondering what they was going to do about it this year. I'm looking at the offensive line all of a sudden. It's looking good. There's all kind of things that are coming together. It's like they're connecting them dots one at a time to spell winning. <laughs> brick by brick. brick. Ah. As soon as the house is built, Whatever bricks is left over, we could pick them up and throw it at the haters. You know what I'm saying? And they're out there. Boy, they're out, right they're there. out there, too. But Carver, man. Hey, Rudy. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rudy, that was an official shout out from McCarver. You hey, boy, you got it coming, too. Dude, bust it. I do a bust in on the show. I'm, look out. He may bust in now. I don't know how he does it, man. All of a sudden, it just comes in out of nowhere. The Rams ain't going nowhere, man. You know what? Let me talk about the Rams for a minute. Man, ain't nobody worried, man. Yeah, yeah, we ain't. You, you, you know, here's we the, ain't got to talk. We, we let them tell they own. I know, because they're going to do it anyway, whether we want them to or not. Hey, yeah, exactly. But right no. now, I'm telling you, McCarr, I'm looking at, like, the most pressing issues. Have we got any left that we really need to feel concerned about? And, and this and this is supposed to come from that last game. Did you see any glaring weaknesses? Did, and I mean by that, things that you know could be adjusted or not adjusted. What, what, what do you think? Well, most definitely what can be a quick fix 
is to catch the goddamn ball. <laughs> That's what can be fixed. I mean, I don't. I. It's like when it counts, you gotta you gotta make plays. You know, I mean, when Selig dropped the goddamn ball, I was like, oh, Kittle would have caught it. But we need you to catch the ball. You know, I don't know if he's having girl issues or something. Can somebody please tweet his girl or whatever and say, look, he's sorry. <laughs> Give him a hug. Forgive him. I don't know what it was because that wasn't Selig time. You know, we need to call Huey Lewis, send him back in time or something for last season because, come on, man, it, it's time. Oh, Hickatini. I know. Would you catch the damn ball, please? Now, you know, I could have said that, you know, something that we need to fix is just to put pressure on the quarterback. But it looks like somebody snapped their fingers and now we got these people in place. It's, it's, it's looking very promising now. Mm. Very promising. Mm. And I'm, I'm just like, hey, yeah. I mean, a few, there's a few sacks that we missed. Yeah. I don't know what was up with that. Mm. Um, I don't know if they just, I don't know if they playing possum. I hope so. But other than that, though, if we'd have caught the ball, mm. you know, we could have had, what, I don't know, 21 points before the half. That's what I counted. At least. That's what I counted, 21 points. I got, yeah, just yeah. like that, Selleck, he was not going to get caught from behind. That dude was too small. He could have brought him down. Also, Hikatini. Oh. And, and, and my boy, Kendrick Bourne. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't. And, and Jimmy was pissed off. Wasn't he? Jimmy was pissed <laughs> Oh, it's like, what are you doing, man? And then uh, Raheem Monster. Yeah. He dropped a pass that could, you know, I'm just like, what What are you, are you guys, ner- why are you guys yeah, nervous? What, what, are you, what are you doing? You guys made the team already, and now you, you're dropping the ball. It's like, what's what's going on? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, gotta put you know what, honestly, though, yeah. yeah, but honestly, uh, other than that, had they caught the ball and, and got in that end zone, It'd have been lovely, you know what I'm saying? It'd, be, it'd, it'd have been lovely, mm. we, you know. Mm. So that that's really the only thing that I'm just kind of just shaking my head mm. at. And uh, <sighs> those are just as, that's about it, though, man. You know what? That's it. I, I got a feeling those are those are small things, and they can make adjustments. He continue will will catch the ball in the future. Selleck will know I need to catch the ball, and then I can run. And yeah, you know, little basic things like that. Kendrick, that's it. I've seen, we've seen Kendrick catch the ball. I mean. McCarr, we've seen windows that tight, and he's coming yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Now he's. Yeah. <laughs> Kendrick, what are you doing to me, man? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Exactly. So, because we know, we already know. So, <sighs> just just little stuff like that. But other than that, though, yeah. you know, can't get mad. I'm ready. I'm well, ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Because the Richard Sherman show, they threw on uh, Sherm. Hey, him and Rambo. Jacoby, man, they threw on Sherm one time, and after they said, okay, 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 okay. That's still the same dude, man. <laughs> some, you know, some, something happened to me that game because, like, when Sherman first came to this team, I had to sleep on it because I didn't like the idea. But then I, I was like, you know what? He's gonna help us. So over time, I just liked the fact that he was playing that role. You know, getting everybody hyped up, making sure everybody's in place, learning the defense and everything, playing that role. But I always was like, I have to see him play on the field. Mm. When they finally tried to try him, and he shook his head like this, I don't know, something just hit me. I was like, oh, man, I love Richard Sherman <laughs> on this team now. Because ain't nobody throwing over there. And Akello, Akello, this is his time to shine. Because mm. they're going to be trying him. Yep. They're going to be trying him, All but day. they don't want to do that either. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm excited. I can't wait, man. We we actually we actually ready, man. We could do some things. It's just everybody got to play their part, man, and be consistent. Mm-hmm. That's that's the only That's thing. Always, we got enough to get things done. Playbook period. playbook is coming. And McCarver, also, you, you mentioned Akella Witherspoon. He made a great play in that game, too. Now, you got Andrew Luck and Jacoby Brissett thinking, well, where are we supposed to throw the ball? Richard Sherman is not to be messed with. You already know that. Who is this dude? You know? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> hey, but with that said, McCarver, there's going to be the desperate. Mm-hmm. I call it the desperation game. Every year we play the Chargers last game. Oh, who, yeah. who, who are some of the guys that are going to make well of their last chance to impress the coaches? Because these guys are playing this this, this this Thursday. Them as the boys, every last one of them pretty much is on the bubble. So uh, who do you like? Man, that uh, 
You know, one thing that I was I was scratching my head on in particular was the running backs. <laughs> but now, but now I, I could tell you who I want already. Mm. Who's my four? I guess so Shanahan said, "Yeah, we can do four. I'd love to hear that." It's Molson. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it it has to be Jarek McKinnon, Matt Breda. We're gonna get them out the way. Mm. Oh my God. And he's actually mm, mm, and he's mm. actually having to think about it. You know McCarve is playing. <laughs> you, 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 you want me to help you with this? No, you don't have to help me. It's just <laughs> I'm so, I'm still blown away. I'm still blown away because this man came one game and he's already guaranteed a spot <laughs> if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? You got my vote. <laughs> Yeah, uh, nice, real nice. Uh, Alfred. We go call that his name. Call him Alf. Call him Alf. We're, we're, we're gonna get to know Alfred. him real well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> more. Let's just don't even, don't even don't even say Morris. Just say more because he's gonna give you more <laughs> y'all. Yeah, Alf. Alf Moore. Yeah. Now. It's, uh, yeah, it has to be right. It has to be Raheem Mostert. It has to be number no, four. Oh, it, yeah. I, 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 Joe Williams. I was reaching for him, but we might as well move on. Um, thank you. Uh oh. But we, uh, we might as well because that's our four right there. I mean, Mostert is really good on special teams. Yeah. You know, so I, and just the little stuff that he he makes mistakes on. Maybe he could. You know, but we can't keep five, so I really don't see it. I, although there's no way. Yeah, uh, you know, I I tell you, I, I I really, I like McNichols. I actually like uh, the kid Jeff Wilson. These guys, yeah, I, maybe one or two of them is gonna be in the practice squad. I don't know, but if they do, somebody's gonna pick them up. I got a feeling because you know how Pete Carroll is. Pete Carroll is probably parked out in the parking lot every day in disguise in different cars and everything, watching the going ons. <laughs> exactly. Hey, McNichols. <laughs> well, we pulled up Dante Johnson over here. <laughs> we got Michael Wilhoy. <laughs> Come on, join the club, you know. Yeah, that, probably. That was an excellent piece. Yeah, but you know what? But, yeah, but you know what, though? I mean, who doesn't? whoever doesn't make this team, man, me personally, I'm just not going to think about it. I'm no. just going to move forward with what we have. I mean, that's just the name of the game. We can't keep everybody. I know. Now, I will tell you this, though. You know, I guess to kind of make a decision a little easier, if – I know it's not going to happen. I'm just using this as an example. Mm. If you wanted to keep five running backs mm. and you really wanted to keep five running backs, mm. then you can kind of be like, OK, who can we just pick up out of here? You know, they could uh, they can pick uh, Jimmy Ward up out of here <laughs> Wait. just to make a roster spot. If, if you're sitting there scratching your head about a 53 man roster and you got 54, if you want, you know. You can easily just play Jimmy Ward out. You know, you, you can't. I mean, I know it's money that we he's going to get paid anyway, but let's just take that loss because it's just a waste of time. It's a waste of a position on the team, period. I know he was supposed to be the backup for Richard Sherman if something happened or, you know, he can move around in defense. But look, man, he, why is he hurt now? Quad. You know? He's I, got a, he's a, he hurt his quad. It's always his quad. No, I... It, I, you know, last year, like I said before, what I seen Jimmy Ward on that sideline, like every game, like getting on everybody. I don't know, I don't know what he was saying. You know, I was like, hey, don't get hurt, okay? <laughs> Be like me, you know. Drink more milk. I don't know what he was saying to him, but nah, no, for I mean, real, it, it's just a waste. We got to move on. We we have to. We can't keep hoping that he's gonna stay healthy, and then when he is healthy, he don't play like. We want him to play. Oh, I know. You know? That's, we got to move on. It's too many. It's right. too much talent on his team to keep somebody like that on. But Carver, you know, I like Jimmy Ward, but it's like, but, but Carver, it's 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 like if you bought two cars, you paid for that car already. It's sitting out there. You know, if you drive around the block, you have to get out of the car, and pull your tools out. See, this is this is the problem with Jimmy. We've already paid him. He's got a guaranteed eight point five million dollar contract. You got to get some work out of him. 
if they trade him, the 49ers going to have to pick up half the tab from what I'm concerned. The 49ers don't want to do it. Somebody said, cut your losses. Don't lose a roster spot like McCarver just pointed out and, and let him go ahead. I feel bad, but they like him. They always say things like, he works hard. Yeah. We, 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 we like Jimmy. Kyle just went on record on saying that just the other day. So, oh, man. He works hard, but his bones is weak. It's not worth it. You know what I'm saying? It's just not worth It's just not. It's, come on. We got to move on. We do. It's the only way we're going to move forward. Yeah. Well, Kyra, speaking of trades, trains. you know, Khalil Mack, uh, everybody wants some Khalil, Khalil oh, Mack man. so hey. badly. But you know, McCarver, you got to pay a hefty price for Khalil Mack. Somebody today, I, I just heard just somebody talk about uh, three first round draft picks. Word? No, but I said, wait. Three first round draft picks. I think, picks. yeah, you went too far, fam. And then I said, no, I, I would give, you know, you don't, you only give up two first round draft picks for a quarterback. I got to give it three for nah, Khalil. That's, cool. that's too much. And then give a third and a fourth round for the upcoming years. Oh, no. I'm glad you're not in the front office. That's too, I like Khalil Mack. But McCarver, there's going to be some outrageous trades. And then there's going to be those who say, because Gruden's not a dumb guy. He's going to say, all right, you, you guys like Khalil? I'm willing to give him to you. Give me the Forrest Buckner. A first and a second rounder, he's all yours. I'll give you a first and third rounder, a fourth rounder. I got a feeling that they're going to try to make a fool out of the 49ers if they go too far. I know Lynch won't do it, but how does that appeal to you? Well, no, we can't give up Buckner. We can't. Uh, he's he's developing and getting better. That's our guy, you know. I mean, I would want I would want this, this pass rush to be... I mean, threatening to all the teams that we play. We get Khalil Mack plus what we saw against the Colts. We need all of We need Buckner. We need Buckner. He, he can't go. Now, if Buckner left and we have Khalil Mack, we could still put pressure on the quarterback. But no, not no Buckner. Not no three first rounds. Um, hey, here, here we go. He, he's going to make the deal. Maybe, he's about to be the deal maker. I can feel it. Go ahead. Maybe... Maybe, maybe, maybe two. Maybe. Two what? Maybe two first rounds. Okay. Maybe two first rounds. Like maybe two. I got no problem with that. Um, I anticipate on us being very high in the rounds for the next few years yep. anyway. Yep, yep. Maybe two. But, I mean, three, you're just, no, man, come on, now, come on. Now, I don't think that would most definitely be, like, uh, Chucky's offer. That will most definitely be McKenzie's offer because it's that's just – He's kind of upset at that toy call still, I think. So he's like, oh, no, I want to help 49. You know? But um, not Buckner, but we can most definitely hook them up. Like, you know, we can give them Jimmy Ward. See, 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 I just don't believe. I, I, I don't believe the Raiders would take Jimmy some, Ward. But maybe a change of scenery. They may think that way. We bring Jimmy Ward over, and they need secondary help for the most part anyway. Maybe. Would you, give him five, let's give him five players that we know we're going to cut. Right, would, you know? would you throw Eric Armstead in there? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's just with him, I just want to see more of him. And I think he got potential. You know what I'm saying? So, see, it, yeah, like, it depends what else. Now, with, with Armstead, it depends, though, what else. Are you doing with that? No, no. You know, now we got to balance it out. See, I would most definitely keep Buckner all day, all day. Armstead, we can probably make a deal, but it depends. What else do you want? Yeah. You know, what else do you want? Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What else do you want? Yeah, don't, 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 because pretty soon they're going to gut your team for a player that now you got to yeah. replace some guys in order for them to be effective. Now you're back where you started at square one. This is why I'm thinking. Sensible deals, I want to hear, but just getting rid of everybody just to get rid of to have Khalil Mack. No, no, no. We no. need we we need who we know is going to work already. No. You know why? But I don't know. I mean, I'm all I'm all for trying to get him, and I know John Lynch probably been on that phone because oh, I mean we we sat back, didn't have a clue we was going to get Jimmy G, but it just happened out the blue. Damn, they got we Tom most definitely Brady. ain't going to get no Khalil. Mack. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Damn no, damn show ain't gonna get no Khalil Mack for no second round. I know, but I don't mind giving a first round, maybe two, maybe a first round. Let's see, first round, Eric Armstead. Jim, uh, throw Jimmy in for as a bonus. Throw Jimmy, throw him in there. <laughs> hey, hey, we'll we'll pay for Jimmy. We'll we'll pay for him too. Oh, 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 okay, know. here's the thing. Now you got to pay Khalil oh, Mack his money when he gets here. I don't I don't know what he's asking, but Aaron Donald just moved the bar up. 
So that means Khalil Max says, look, I'm gonna tell y'all right now before you say anything else, I can outplay Aaron Donald. Yeah, I'm, that's all, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that right there and give me a call, give my agent a call, and I'll talk to you later. Let's just see. Did they finally pay him? They, they, I understand they're getting ready to break the bank. Uh, it's gonna be yeah. one of the biggest steals that the Lions ever got. So that means we gotta go beyond yeah. that. That's why I'm, I'm a little concerned. One of the team. Yeah, see, because Rams they got no money now, so I don't know how they're gonna do this unless they plan on going into uh, that that place where you gotta pay penalty fees. that will take you five or six years to pay. They don't care, huh? <laughs> I know. They don't care, huh? Yeah. Uh, Getting financial tips from Rudy and stuff, yeah. man. That's just not cool. <laughs> yeah, no. So, but yeah. Um, I'm sure that John Lynch, he ain't that stupid. He ain't gonna just, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I, yeah, that would that would be nice, and that is something that I'm not dwelling on either. Yeah. Until something like that does happen, because I'm just focused on who we have right now. Yeah, because you know, I, you know, but it's like you say, it's about John Lynch, who's full of shocks and surprises. This is the wheel of dealer. This man don't rest at night. That's why he told us last year, stay awake, and faithful. What? And ever since he said that, we've gained Jimmy Garoppolo, Richard Sherman, and God knows if he's through or not. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> before we go, I got to- Looking promising, brother. I, I tell you what, a prediction, because I like to do predictions. The Charger mm-hmm. game, our guys that are trying to survive versus the Charger guys trying to survive. You know, we, we, we're playing these guys in a few weeks. So, you know, ain't going to be mm-hmm. no display of plays from either coach. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, just a lot of people trying to make the team. A lot of, uh, a lot of penalties, probably. Yeah. Uh, a lot of leading with the helmet penalties yeah. because people trying to make a team. I mean, if I was trying to make a team, I would still be hitting like that yep. because it shows the aggression, mm-hmm. even though I got the flag because even the coaches don't agree with yep. it. But Good point. yeah, I always found always found that fourth game of the preseason interesting because you just see who's out there hungry and you know, so and then and then Rombo, yeah. it's on. Yeah. It's on after that. It's <laughs> on. We got the official roster, man, Minnesota. You wait, bet. Give me, wait, 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 wait. You gotta give me a score though. I love I love gambling on your scores. What kind of score you uh, got? Oh, oh, you want a score mm-hmm. for the anticipation you, already, you, you gave me you gave me what's gonna happen. How's it going to end? Okay. Now, well, I know that C.J. Bether know that McNichols is down his neck. You mean Mullins. And I know McNichols want to show them. You mean Mullins, right? I was McNichols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mullins. Yeah, Nick Mullins. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know Nick Mullins want to show, hey, man, I've been here all along. You know, now I want to shine. So uh, I think they're going to get in. They're they going to, uh, I don't High scoring? Gotta be high scoring. I say, I say. Do you do you know how the Chargers are looking as far as you know? I'm scared to death. That's that's the one team on our early part of the schedule. Because they got a lot of depth. Scares the bejesus out of me, man. I don't even want to see Derwin James, man. I I tell you what, I I, I just hope he they make him sit down yeah. uh, or something, cause so we can see at least a decent game. Uh, Thursday, my God, that boy, that dude can play. I, now I don't know. I, I see. I can't say how how many scores Chargers gonna make, but I say we at least score twenty eight points. All right. Yeah, I say at, at least. So that's minimum. McCarver's got us you know. in twenty eight. Can we stop the Chargers? I don't even know who they got in a sec. Well, I watched one Charger game. They look kind of uh, other than that that running back Eckler. They look kind of like a little better than average uh, offensively. It's that defense is scary, but offensively they ain't bad. Yeah. Okay. Three points again. Okay. Yeah. They're gonna put it. They're gonna put up some points. Yeah. All right. They're gonna put up some points. Yeah. It's hammer time. There you go. So and they know. So we're gonna leave McCarver. He's gonna leave at twenty eight, and he ain't saying what the Chargers go do. <laughs> they're gonna put yeah, on some points. <laughs> yeah, they they gonna do their thing. So, and uh, yeah, I see like Aldrick Robertson, he might even get off too. Oh. He was like, "Hey, man, you guys better keep me. <laughs> I'm not good." You no, know, you never. They gonna be playing their heart out because it's it's his job on the line. Too. Hey, everybody wants to be a 49er, McCarver. Come on, man. Of course they are, man. You know, man. Can I can I be the water boy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, can I? Can you be the motivational coach on the sideline, please? <laughs> well, I tell you what, we'd be awesome. 
<laughs> but Carver, we go. You know what I'm saying? We go, go, man. I tell you what, it's time to give that holler, to Carver. Three. Hey, wait, wait. You don't forgot about the baby. The baby ain't sleeping. Well, I'm like in the garage okay. downstairs. So, so the baby, what you supposed so, to? probably used to it by now, anyway. <laughs> I'm ready, Rombo. McCarver. That's exactly how I'll be at the games too. <laughs> Throwing up that symbol. Logo. McCarver. Let everybody know, no. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> he can do it. He's almost ready. Three, two, one. Nine. Let's go. Yeah. I believe he means it. <laughs> oh, and for the record, for the record, I'll be in Tampa Bay this year, too. And I will be doing that halftime in a stadium. You already know. Yeah. C.M. McCarver. Always a pleasure. Check out C.M. McCarver on his YouTube page. That boy loves the 49ers every bit as much as we do. Fam. I tell you, man, it's that point, and I haven't done this in a long time, right? <laughs> but it's time to give a score, right? Man, I, I've thought about this, and I figure it's gonna be a high scoring game because there's not gonna be a lot of defense on these guys. It's gonna be good defense. There's gonna be guys playing hard, but now the first liner guys aren't gonna be out there because everybody's protecting their players, hoping they make it to the season unscathed without injuries. So I'd say, CJ, I don't care who you are, if you're a second or third or fourth stringer, CJ's gonna beat you up. So let's say, CJ, let's see, who's going to be on the field with him? See, even our third and fourth string guys, as far as wide receivers go, are good, all right? So with that said, let me calculate my score, my favorite score of 27. Forget, it, forget about it. Let me go to 32. 49ers, 32. I've seen the Chargers back up QB. I, see, I actually watched their game to the end the other day. They look okay, but I think CJ and our wide receiver core, even the third and fourth straight guys we got, because we put Dunbar out there, I think Richie James is going to... Do you play Richie James? All right, never mind. Let me, let me not speculate on that. Richie James is unfair. I mean, if you put Richie James out there in that game tomorrow, or the game against the Chargers, it's unfair. 49ers 33. I'm just going to have to play, though. They're going to run out of receivers. 49ers 30. What, is it 33? I'm going to leave it 33. 49ers 33. Chargers... You'll get 24. There you go, fam. That's my prediction. I write it down. I, I'll admit to it after the game. No problem. <laughs> See ya. I'll be in your face at your place. We'll enjoy this game together. And of course, after the post game fun. And uh, here we are. We're at that door, about to open up and go into the 2018 season. <laughs> Please don't forget to hit that like. Share and subscribe. I can't wait to see you game time. Count me out, Maestro. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.